The MAPS, uh, we should say that this is following what's called a MAPS protocol. It's M-A-P-S, which stands for Monitoring Avian Productivity and Survivorship. It's a nationwide program, so there's MAP stations all around the, uh, the North America area, and in fact, they're even setting up some in Central and South America. Um, the idea is to band uh, once every 10 days, uh, and we run the nets for six hours from 6 a.m. to noon. And, uh, you just divide up the summer into these 10-day windows, and then you just pick a day in there. And so we uh, will actually do it eight times during the summer. This is our fifth sixth time out and the idea is to try and, and capture birds that are breeding here and then later on the juveniles and we also you know take keep a record of the birds that we see in here so we're getting an idea what birds are attempting to breed in this this little patch of woods here and then this information is sent into a, a larger database and then they do studies you know based on data they're getting from all around the United States to try and determine whether birds certain species are you know breeding successfully in one in areas or not. This was started at Waterfall Glen in 1991 by the then Chicago Land Bird Observatory. Uh, Dennis DeCourcy was the one who founded that and that's when I started doing this. In 1991 I came very early and I've been out here banding virtually every summer since then. In 2007 the Forest Preserve District took over the uh, program uh, because the uh, Chicago Land Bird Observatory wasn't going to do it anymore. We've also been interested out here because now this is following the restoration and uh, it's very different. Uh, before when I'd sit at this table you couldn't see 15 yards into the either side. It was so thick with uh, honeysuckle, buckthorn and the like. And when you walk the trails you could only walk the trails. You, you, know, you just couldn't bushwhack it. Uh, now you can see for you know, 100 yards or so. So it's quite different and we found that uh, we're getting a different suite of birds. For example, last season we had way more indigo buntings than we've ever had before. And, uh, house wrens. House wrens. We don't get as many cardinals anymore, but they're still out on the perimeter. Or chickadees. Uh, chickadees, but that could be because of West Nile virus as well. Uh, so we've been, uh, this is, MAPS is really a longitudinal study and you want to keep this going over long periods of time so that you can you know, get a robust database to uh, analyze. These are called mist nets. They were developed by the Japanese actually to hunt for birds, but uh, ornithologists and uh, bird banders use them to uh, uh, catch the birds. It's uh, pretty injury free, and what happens is the birds aren't supposed to be able to see this net, and they fly into it, and then fall down in the pockets and get tangled up. And then you have to come and extract them. I'm holding the bird in what's called the bander's grip. You get the head and the neck between the uh, fingers like that and it allows you to uh, secure the bird and keep the wings from flying if you need to and have access to the various parts that we need to look at. So the first thing I'll do is put the band on. And then can you double check the band number for me, at least the last two numbers? 67. Yep. Then we take various measurements on the bird. First is what's called a wing cord, which is 64 millimeters. This bird has a brood patch. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The brood patch is, indicates that the female is in breeding condition. She'll um, lose the feathers on her belly, which allows for the heat to transfer directly from her body to the eggs. The feathers are really good insulators, keep birds warm. So to allow that heat to be removed from the mother's body to the eggs, she loses the feathers on her breast. So she also has a fat of two. Oh, wow. Yeah. So most birds, we don't expect to see fat. We'll see fat in certain deposits underneath uh, the skin, um, in, in the throat, in the throat and down underneath my yellowish stuff down there. So they're pretty uh, atypical for birds during the breeding season to have fat. Usually you see them with big fat reserves closer to migration. Okay, I don't see any body mold, which we wouldn't expect to see this time of year. So she's not losing any feathers. Or I don't see any flight feather mold. Okay. These birds will all start, these adult birds will start molting all their feathers after the breeding season is done. Uh, let's see, and the flight feather wear is substantial in this bird, call it a four. Oh, this is, uh, what's that? I'm going to call this a second ear bird. Okay. With the uh, 
primary culverts being juvenile. The secondary culverts are formative. I don't see a limit. In either the primaries or secondaries? I'm looking now. There's a limit in the secondaries. Okay. I'm not seeing one in the primaries. So okay. Sure. So by sculling the bird, we are just confirming that it is an adult and not a juvenile bird born this year, um, which since she's in breeding condition, we know it's not a juvenile bird this year. But much like a human baby's skull is soft, the bone hasn't fully formed. Um, same thing with the birds. And so we can actually brush back the feathers of the head and look through the skin to see the skull. And if it's not fully formed, you see different colors, if you will. Sometimes you look for, uh, for an adult or you look for a little, like a speckled look as it gets the second layer of bone on the skull there. It's uh, not an easy thing to see at first. So. So that's, so that's just another indication that it's a, it's a skull of six. Okay, so yeah, she's a second year bird by skull and by plumage, and she's a female by brood patch and by plumage. Okay. So on some of the birds, we are actually um, pulling two tail feathers and taking a uh, cloacal swab, and these are going to the um, University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, for some research that they are doing on uh, avian influenza. So the swab is just a medical swab that we just kind of insert into the genital orifice, if you will, of the, of the bird into the cueca. Just to get cells. Okay, and now we zeroed that out. Yep, we zeroed it out. So the last thing we will do is weigh the bird. Thirteen point four grams. Okay. Okay. And then release the bird. Wait, she's going back out. She's going back up. Sit there. Wow. Check out her. Check out her new jewelry. Right.